Hello everyone, I am so excited. Today is a very, very special day because I am being joined by the amazing Priya O'Shea, who was one of the contestants on this year's Great British Bake Off. Not only that, but the amazing Priya literally lives five minutes away <laughs> from my house. What a small world this is. We had planned to go and meet somewhere earlier on this morning for a meeting and then it was really noisy and we were like, she said, shall we go to my house? It's only five minutes away. I was like, oh my God, you live around <laughs> the corner from me. So we have been sat here chatting all morning. I've got so many exciting things to talk to you about. Priya has had the most amazing journey that I know so many of you are going to benefit from. So if you guys have any questions, please drop them into the comments. We will try and go through them at the end. Um, but first of all, Priya. Hello. Welcome to Mums in Business Association. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining me in the interview today. Tell everyone who you are, what you've been up to, Ooh, what you do. What I'm doing. Um, so I am Priya, as you know. Um, and I had the amazing privilege of being part of this year's Bake Off, which was kind of mad. Um, and a bit of a dream, really. I've watched Bake Off for years, actually. And I don't think I did tell you this. I almost, I downloaded the application for me in 2012. I remember reading um, this. You didn't tell me this earlier, but I remember no, it was No, I downloaded it and I started filling it in and I would just got married that year. And so life was quite busy anyway, I'd moved house, I was in a new job and I just thought, oh, I can't really do this, I haven't got time for this. Um, so I didn't apply, but I'd always thought about it. And every year I'd watch the show and think, oh, that looks like so much fun. I mean, it looks stressful, but it looks so much fun. And I bake a lot. So I'd have a lot of friends saying, you should apply for Bake Off. When are you applying for Bake Off? I thought, you know what, I will, I will. I should do it, just try it, see what happens. Um, so I did apply and I didn't get through. Um, and I was really gutted. I'd gone through all of the interview stages and the auditions um, and I thought, well, I'll just try again. And so I kept baking and um, had a lot of time to practice and try lots of new things and then applied again and I did get through and it was amazing. Um, and actually I wasn't the only baker that had applied more than once. Quite a few of the bakers had yeah. applied before. So I think that was always, um, that's always good. A good lesson in trying again and resilience, you know, just to, to so, give it another go. Let's go right back to the beginning because you don't really have a history in baking, do you? Like no. your career started with Microsoft yeah. or your, like the majority of your career was with Microsoft. Yeah. So tell everyone about what made you go from being in Microsoft. So right now you're currently a lady of leisure, shall we say? Well, yeah. not in terms of leisure that? at the moment. I wish I was. <laughs> Hold um, on, we've been, we've been sat here drinking tea and eating we have, cookies this we morning. Have, we so have. when when was she saying she's not a lady of leisure? Yeah, that is true. She's a lady who drinks tea and eats cookies. That is true. I was though also writing part of my novel at like oh, I finished up at twelve last night, and then before that, I made about fifty cupcakes for the nursery and then got woken up twice in the night last this night. This is why I uh, needed to get Priya yeah. on here with you all, because you can see straight away, she's just a regular mum. Oh God, like this us. morning was just, I was down at, my son woke up at two, came into our bed, and sharing a bed with like, a th almost three year old is like sharing a bed with an elephant, because he takes up Star all the space. <laughs> yeah, and then he wants to be sleeping on my face. Um, and then he woke up again at about four and needed a drink, like his life depended on it. So I like, ran downstairs, got him back to sleep. Then my five-year-old needed a wee and needed me to go with him to the toilet at about half six. That was great. He then came in the bed, my husband's away. And then we all slept in until five to eight, which is interesting when you've yeah. got a child that needs to go to nursery and a child that needs to go to school and they're in two different directions. So yeah, it was frantic this morning. So um, there, you, there yeah. you have it. That's real yeah. mum life. So you may real be sitting there thinking, oh my God, it's Priya from Great British Bake Off. But trust me, she has the same oh, mum struggles yeah. as we all have. Everybody, yeah. like we all know what the morning, was, especially oh, yeah. when you've had a rough night. I, this doesn't happen often, but it was so frantic this morning. I ran out of the house, um, no breakfast, no shower, nothing. Literally brushed my teeth, got my clothes on, ran out, dropped the kids off, came in made a batch of vanilla cupcakes to go to the nursery. This is all children in need baking that I'm doing. 
And then they're in the oven for 17 minutes. So while they're in the oven, run upstairs with I my look, timer. I love how specific yeah. you are. They're there for 17 minutes. Yeah. So I've got 17 so minutes to get a shower. Shower, get my hair. shower <laughs> wash, straighten, dry my hair, get dressed, run downstairs, take them out the oven, go upstairs, carry on drying my hair, get ready, and then pack them up and then semi tidy what I could, then run out the door to meet you. So that's my and morning. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. So. Explain to everyone, how did you go from being in a corporate background? What made you um, not just apply for Great British Bake Off, but where did this um, sort of career path or yeah. career change come from, from being at Microsoft? Um, so I had a, I, I, I really enjoyed my time in IT and actually, so I'm 35 now and I joined uh, Microsoft when I was 23, I think. Um, so I was... Yeah, I was there for a long time, and um, there was always reorgs, as you get in, um, in big companies, and while I was on maternity leave for the second time, my role was made redundant, um, and I was also offered another role, because the company's brilliant, they're very supportive, and finding us other, other things to do, um, but it made me think about what I did, and it made me think... God, who am I? Who am I if I'm not working? What do this I do? Was, this was a very interesting point of when we were talking about this earlier because it was like you felt very much identified by Absolutely. the job in corporate yeah. that you were doing at the time. Yeah. You knew that that was what you, you Oh, completely. So it, it really defined me. And I um, worked quite long hours. I travelled around quite a lot. I really enjoyed the job that I did. Um, but it did define me. I felt really smart and capable because I worked for a really brilliant company that made me feel that way. And I thought, God, if you take that away, then who am I? What do I do? I've been spending the best part of two years like chasing kids around, changing nappies, um, cleaning, sick out the car seat, you know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> and um, it also made me think, God, I, I don't know what my passions are, actually. I don't know what I enjoy because I hadn't really had much time to myself during those years. It was quite a juggle just working and having the kids. So actually trying to do anything else outside of that was just not an option. But because the redundancy came up, it forced me to think about things. So I had a period of time before I was due back to work and to start the new role that they'd offered me. And then I still had time to decide if I wanted to take the redundancy after that. So in that time, I thought, well, I'll just sign up to a few things, trying to <laughs> find some hobbies. And I signed up to a writing course because I thought I would enjoy it. And it was happening in Leicester. It was quite easy to go along to. Um, and then I'd also signed up to a henna course because it's always something I'd wanted to try and I'm quite creative anyway. And I thought, well, if I can ice, I might be able to use a henna coat. I like that. Yeah, it's kind of piping in a different way. Um, and then I, I did go back to work and I tried it. And although it was a juggle, we were able to make it work. And my team were lovely, but um, in the back of my mind, I still had this option of taking redundancy. And then I applied for Bake Off. And I thought, well, if I get onto Bake Off, I think I'll take the redundancy and I'll just go full force into it. And I didn't get into Bake Off that year, but it made me think I've just got to give it a go and I've got to you try to pursue my passions at, a bit more. At that point, that yeah, there I'm was just going to try it. I'm just going to try it. So I took the redundancy, and then I did a lot of baking. I went on a couple of baking courses because I had the redundancy money, and it was just it just fun. Yeah. It was just really good fun. My son was still in nursery for a couple of days because we'd already pre-booked him to be in. So I did a bit more baking. Um, I started practicing the henna, which was quite fun. Um, I'd also been really interested in changing career and moving into law years ago. Um, what a contrast. Yeah, and I thought- Baking, law. Yeah. So, but I didn't, but in, so I went into court and I sat in on a few observations and things, and then that led me to applying to be magistrate. Which this I is so really cool. I, I was really impressed by this this morning when you said about the fact that you're a magistrate. I don't know how many of our viewers. Have you been asked that? In, have you mentioned that in an interview before? Not I really. Didn't, I've never, no. I didn't know I that. I was quite, quite surprised. I've done my research before I came to see yeah. you this morning. And I was like, oh, I no, didn't know I didn't that. talk about it very much. But I think, I think sometimes it is interesting to share because um, there is a shortage of magistrates. And actually, um, there's quite a diverse mix of magistrates in, in the year that I joined. And I think that adds a lot to the magistrate. I think you said as, as well, so, with, with the wanting to go into law, it's kind of you have a foot in the door, but you're not quite taking on yeah, the whole of I the responsibility. Yeah, it's not a career change, but it allows me to do work that I think is really meaningful, very impactful. It's a lot of responsibility, but it's 
it's really rewarding as well. Um, and I find it really interesting. I find our justice system really interesting. Um, and I find people very interesting as well. And you obviously meet lots of different people as well. So um, yeah, that's something I really enjoy. That's obviously something that just carries on. I did a lot of baking that, that year that I took the redundancy, as well as just spending more time with my kids and nice. going to the theme park on a Tuesday afternoon because you can. Yeah. Because nobody else is there. That and my freedom, son wasn't in school at the yeah. time, so we could do all those things and just go to the farm or we would just drive to Birmingham and go to the Think Tank Museum because you can. we can. <laughs> yeah, and that was brilliant. I loved that. Um, but then I did always know I wanted to apply for Bake Off again. But before I applied for Bake Off, I applied for a mentoring scheme with Penguin, which is for diverse writers. So there were lots of things going on behind the scenes. So when you were at um, Microsoft and you were a little bit unsure of who you were outside yeah. of Microsoft. There were lots of different things bubbling underneath the surface. So yeah. what would be your sort of advice for people who are out there in the same situation where they're in um, maybe a corporate job, yeah. but they've got other things that they feel passionate about? Yeah. Oh, I think, I think it's really, really, really hard to carve out time for the things that you just enjoy. Just want to do. Because if it's not work, it's really hard to yeah. justify it. But I think it's so important that you do, and you really do have to carve that time out. You have to set the time aside and go and do it. But if you do, it really addresses, like, helps you address a bit of balance sometimes. Yeah. And it might not amount to anything, but it makes you feel it really you good. Feel it's in-depth. good for your confidence, about your, for your self-esteem. It's also just really enjoyable to do just something to do you something really like. Fun. And for me, when I was at work, everything was very um, technology-based. Um, and actually, I used to really enjoy coming home from work and baking, which is really tangible. Kind of a, yeah. And I physically made something, whereas I could spend a whole day in email, in like documents and things like that. I'm not actually making anything. So I really liked that. I really liked that it was tangible. But if I'm really honest, I've forgotten what I was good at and what I enjoyed. And I did really like my job, but there was a lot of other things. I'm quite a creative individual, which now seems really obvious because I bake and I'm writing and I do the henna and stuff like that. But at the time when I was at work, my role didn't require all of that creativity. Yeah. It required lots of other skills. And I felt like I wanted to kind of hone in on the stuff that I was really good at and where I might actually have a talent for something. And you don't always know what that is. And actually, if I wasn't having any success with baking and if the writing wasn't really going anywhere, I think I'd have just kept trying more things. And what I would have loved is for somebody to say, Priya, you know what? You're really good at this. You know, like a sorting hat, like a Harry Potter sorting hat. And somebody says, da-da, you'd be great at whatever. And nobody's going to do that. And I felt like I had to work that out myself by trying stuff out. And if if I'm good at it, then I'll give it a go. And if I'm not, then I'll try something else. I'll try something else. And it's really good fun. You enjoy it. And um, you learn a bit more about yourself. And I'm probably still doing that I'm still kind of discovering what I think my talent might be whether it is more food or whether it's more writing or whether it's actually going to be a mix of both of those things and while they all started out as hobbies you know there's not just you you can't say that that can't then result in something else it could be part of an income and and if it doesn't work out I can always go back into corporate IT I've got like over a decade of experience that's not going to go anywhere but for now, I think my ability to succeed is far greater doing the stuff I'm just naturally passionate about and really excited about. Like, I will happily read cookbooks in bed. I subscribe to lots of food magazines because I love sitting down and looking at recipes. I've got shelves and shelves of cookbooks upstairs and I'm in my element going through them, comparing recipes and things like that. And I wasn't that way with technology. When yeah. I was there, and I was fine. And it's but something it's not it's that passion, passion, isn't it? We talk about this. We talk about this quite a lot. In the fact that it takes a lot of hard work to make a business work. So if you don't have that passion in the yeah. first place, you're fighting a losing battle because yeah. you've got to have a passion to work the amount of hours and yeah. to give the the sort of incredible amount of time and effort to something. You've got to have that passion yeah. in the first place. Like you say, when you're reading the books in bed and all the recipes are just sinking in, yeah. and you're thinking, "Oh, I want to go try this." because you've got a passion and we are like massive sort of supporters of people to say, you know, go and find your passion. And it's very scary. Like you said, taking the redundancy, do you do this? Like there's so many choices, but it's finding that passion inside you. And you don't, and that's hard sometimes, especially when you're kind of lost in just your day to day and 
being a parent and having a business and having just responsibilities at home, trying to support other members of your family. Like my husband often travels away for work, so I'm trying to support him to enable him to do that. And it's juggling lots of things. And I think finding the things you're passionate about is really difficult. So you just have to start with the stuff that you find fun yeah. and the things that you enjoy and give yourself a little bit of time to do those things. Don't worry about what it amounts to. Just do it purely because, you know, for that one hour, you're just going to have a really good time. So when lots of other things at home could be, or at work can be quite challenging, you've got that one hour to yourself where you do something that you really enjoy. And actually, you don't know where that might take you. And sometimes you do something and it leads to new connections and new opportunities. But do it just because you just really enjoy it at That's that time. That's a good bit of advice. Just do it. Just do, do it because you enjoy it. Just do it, it. yeah. Just do it I love it's that. fun. So. And then and then see where you go with it afterwards. But I think there are a lot of... I mean, I think you're in two camps. You've got things that you're passionate about, but you don't have the time for them. So you've really got to like find a way to carve that in and just steal a bit of time for yourself to do it. Or you've got those that have forgotten what they really enjoy yeah. because they're so busy and, and you stuff. Don't and you've know. got to find yeah. out what that is. There are loads of things that I would have tried had I not have added any... If I wasn't going in with the things that I was doing because there's lots of other things I think, you know what, I want to give that a go and I want to give that a go. And yeah. Now you're a lady of pleasure. Yeah. You've got lots of time. Oh, I don't have any time. My life is so frantic. I've got like just a half a novel that I still need to finish and uh, lots of bits and things going on. So um, it is a juggle and I am, I'm doing a lot of baking and I get asked to bake for various things. So I'm doing that. Um, she did get asked to bake for today's interview. I was only joking. I texted her, I was like, Priya, when we have our interview, you are going to bring cake, right? I was only joking, half joking. <laughs> and then when I seen it this morning with the little Tupperware top, I was like, oh my God, she's made me cakes. I'm eating for his I cakes. Did, I did. So yeah, you're still very busy with the baking, aren't you? You've yeah. just done some baking for the kids' schools. I have, I have. Yes, for children in need. So they're doing a little, yeah, bake sale. So I've done some baking for that. But um, at the moment, yeah, I think the writing is probably what's taking up the biggest amount of my time. And I... And this actually started before Great British Bake Off, didn't it? It did, So yeah. explain to everyone how we kind of like, I, you touched on it then, and I think I probably jumped in with another question, but tell everyone how you got onto the, the sort of journey of writing. Yeah, so I, I mean, I've always enjoyed writing. I didn't know that I liked writing more than anyone else, but I would often write journals or letters and things like that. I'd really enjoy just writing my thoughts down and, and uh, things that I've always kept diaries and journals since I was a child. Um, but I applied for this... I'd always had an idea for a book as well. I think everybody has a book in them. They I think do. everybody has a book, that they, or a story that they can tell. And so I applied for the Penguin Mentoring Scheme. A friend of mine, the one other friend I had at the time that used to write, because I don't know anybody that writes books. I mean, I do now, but I didn't growing up. So I had one other friend who was a writer who told me about a scheme. So I applied, sent in a thousand words, and they liked it. Yay. So I asked for another 5,000, so I sent those in. And that was a, almost all that I had at the time. I had 7,000 in total. And, and then again, they liked that. So I got invited to a workshop. And then through that, there was about 1,700 people that had applied. They narrowed it down to 44. And then they narrowed it down to 10. And I was one of those 10. And what it means is that I have an, a mentor at Penguin who is an editor. And she's working with me to finish the draft of my first novel. And um, and this and is not like, this is like this is nothing to do with bacon, is it? Tell everyone what, it's about what your food. Story it's is actually about. about a group of Asian women who go along to a cooking class. So as an Asian woman, you are expected to know how to cook, and typically your grandmother would teach your mother to cook, and your mother would teach you to cook. And how could you possibly be a good wife if you can't cook? And so there's always this expectation of girls being able to cook. Um, and so these girls go along to this cooking class an older woman runs and she actually helps them to learn to cook but through the classes they end up learning a lot more about each other and supporting each other to work out who they want to be who their families want them to be and who they want to be for themselves um, so but it's, it's a very empowering feel to the book as well yeah, it so is. it's like women supporting yes, women I like it really that. is that so you've got one that's in a relationship that's not really working and the girls will help her to realise that she needs to come to her senses a bit. You've got two girls that have uh, got feelings for each other and they don't really know what that should mean or amount to because, um, especially in the Asian culture, that's something that's quite difficult still. It's not as accepted as it, it will be hopefully one day. So it's a lot about them supporting each other to sort of discover themselves a little yeah. bit. 
Um, but obviously it's all centered around cooking. So there's a few recipes thrown in and um, that sort of stuff. But yeah, that was happening before Bake Off. And then I went on a big writing break while Bake Off was going on because that took over my entire life. Um, How long does it actually take? So you were in there until... I got to week, week six. six so time, yeah. how is that actually like six weeks of recording? How it's, long does the process take? It's quite full on. So we have a period just before the show when you know that you're going to go on. So you can do a bit of practice and stuff like that. But essentially we'd go on a Friday, um, film all day Saturday, all day Sunday. And I'd get home at midnight on a Sunday. Wow. And then on Monday morning, I'm like, hey kids, mommy's back. Uh, see you later. Off you go to nursery because mommy's got to bake. And then I'd be practicing bakes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Would you know beforehand what you were baking the following week? Or was it... Did yeah, for some sort of, of the... Okay. Yeah, you do. You have an idea. You, you do have a brief. Um, so you know that you're going to be making a birthday cake or a biscuit sculpture or whatever. So you've got that. There's a technical challenge. You don't know what that is at all until you literally uncover the, the ingredients and then, and then you see. Um, but it's a lot that you need to practice. And actually, I think what people don't always realise is it's not just about practising a bit. You've got to create the bake. Yeah. So that takes a certain amount of practice. And then you find your idea and the thing that you're going to run with. And then you've got to practise that. And actually doing that for two different bakes in four days when you've got a live so and things. That's a lot and, of yeah, it's a lot, lot to do. Work, yeah. So um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of baking. Um, but and so that I, I sort of stopped writing while that was going on. I was just about managing to be a parent and, and bake at the same stuff. time. Yeah. Um, and then when Bake Off finished, I kind of picked up the writing again. So I'm trying to finish the first draft of the novel by the end of this year, but. It's a lot, it's a lot of writing and it's, um, my days are quite busy and then obviously when the kids get home from about four o'clock till eight. It's mum time. Yeah, completely. It's food, play, bath, bed, stories, another story, then another seven stories and then, and then I need a wait. Wait. Yeah, and and I need a drink. Show. I'm hungry mummy, <laughs> can I have a bagel? I'm like, no, it's 20 past eight, you should be asleep by now, you cannot have a bagel. <laughs> And then he's still hungry. Like, okay, just have the bagel. Just eat the have bagel. the bagel, please. Just go to sleep. So, um, and we're still working it out. My son has been at school for a couple of months, and we're still kind of getting into a routine. So he'll sometimes come home from school, and he wants like a whole meal, and sometimes he just wants a snack, and then he wants to eat later. And then the other one comes in from nursery. He's already had tea, so then he's. He doesn't want anything. Yeah, and it's just muddling all of that, and um, while trying to do other bits and things, and do the writing as well, and then the other odd commitments I have. And Can we share, I wrote down something earlier when we were chatting. So people have this idea that me and, Leo, that me and Leona have these very glamorous lives, being the co-founders of Mums in Business Association. I know that everybody's just a real person. Mm -hmm. So today, I was very excited to come and meet you today, but I was thinking, I hope she's really normal, like just like <laughs> me. And then we sat here talking and you said to me about writing, and you sit there in your pyjamas eating pack after pack of... Oh, God, yeah. Hoops, hoops, and it is yeah, so yeah. not the glamorous... Oh, yeah, like, no. Writing is not glamorous. It's hard. And I obviously have to write when everybody's yeah. in bed. So I write quite late into the night. We tend to have dinner quite early because I eat at the same time as a five-year-old right when I eat. So dinner's like five, six o'clock. And then I will have another little snack in the evening. And then I'm sometimes writing at like one in the morning. So I'm quite hungry again. So I'll have like <laughs> a bowl of cornflakes or some fill hoops or some cookies. Whatever. We've got some a plate of cookies Do you know there. what? When I'm snacking, it's normally it's you never never the, the sweet stuff. No, not at all. Like I've made, what, 50 odd cupcakes in the last 24 hours? I haven't eaten any of them. <laughs> Don't fancy it, I really do. I suppose when you're baking that many cupcakes, it kind yeah. of Yeah, and also, do you know, a lot of the time when I'm baking, I want to know that the flavour's right and the texture's so right. So you're tasting so well I'm as well. tasting, well, when it's done, I always want to try it. If I'm making something new, so I made these banana and maple pecan little loaves for the first time, so I'd want the to try one of those. Awesome. They're really cute, but um, I made those for the first time, so I'd want to try one to see, can you taste the maple? Do I need more in there? Is it, you know, have I baked it right? But... I'm, I'm just all about sharing. Like I love, I would much rather give it to somebody else, yeah. have them bake it, and I feel so good because about it. Because it's the enjoyment it. of you creating oh, it, isn't it? Something. It's about, yeah. yeah, and I'd, yeah, I, if I make a batch of biscuits, I'll eat one to check that they're fine, and then I'm dishing it out, so. You're a good yeah. neighbour to have. Yeah, I mean, I've got my little, <laughs> I do my baking drop-off, so if I've got, if I've baked a batch of something, 
I've got a friend across the road, my neighbours next door, another set of friends a few doors down, another friend around the corner. If I go to my mum and dad, I take a picture. You're the mum that everyone wants to bump into on the school run. And I do, I often have bakes <laughs> in my car, it's ridiculous. Like I was saying to you earlier, I met my neighbour and made some soda bread last night and soda bread doesn't, doesn't keep so well. So it's best eaten the day you make it, ideally. Um, and I knew I was gonna see my neighbour on the school run, either at nursery or at school. So I had the soda bread and I wasn't going to be coming okay. back home. I was going to my mum and dad, so I had the soda bread in the car. So I bumped to my neighbour, I was like, I need to give you some soda bread. And he's like, okay. And he's like, right now? I'm like, yeah, it's in my car. And he's like, okay. I was like, you strap the kids in, I'll put ours in. And I'll just come. So I just then gave him like half a soda bread wrapped in foil. And he's like, okay, thanks. Yeah, there's worse things that you could be given, I guess. It's true. Yeah, exactly. So shall we go into some questions? Mm. I have some questions here for you. Wendy would like to know, how is your confidence levelling business now since being on the programme? Um, hi, Wendy. Um, I, do you know, I suppose I've always been quite confident. I, I think having been on the programme, I probably feel more confident now than ever to just be myself even more. So when I was working, for example, I was often in meetings with other clients and, um, I would often meet people that were a lot older, typically, and you know, have been in IT for years and years and years and years. And I think I'm also conscious that I sometimes look a lot younger than I am. So I always feel conscious of myself. It was make sure I was very presentable, but I'd always wonder whether they thought I was like the intern that's just locked <laughs> up for a bit. Um, and I suppose having gone through Bake Off, so much of you is exposed anyway, yeah. and people see a little bit of an insight into your life. So I feel, um, far more confident in just being myself. Do you know what I have? I think I have, what has given me a lot of confidence actually is you can really talk yourself out of doing things, especially if they feel like big, bold dreams. Like being on Bake Off is just mad to think that I've done that and I could so easily talk myself out of it. But this year they have 13 bakers. Somebody has to get one of those spaces. Yeah. Like if you don't put yourself why, out there, right, why yeah. wouldn't it be you? And it may not be, but why not? And so with Bake Off, it's really given me the confidence just to go for stuff, be really ambitious, be really bold, be prepared to fail because that will happen, but there's no harm in trying and reaching for things and asking for stuff. And, and don't feel bad about it. Don't feel embarrassed about it. Don't feel like you can't because somebody has to. And the same with the writing, that mentoring scheme, there's 10 people and they have, you know, 1700 applications that year of course i wouldn't think well i've got a high chance of this but somebody You've has got to a fill better chance spaces. if you do enter exactly and there's no harm in trying it so my sort of my confidence with that and reaching for stuff is far greater now because i find it mad that i'm doing that i find it mad that i've even been on the show it's still so surreal i was watching junior bake off thinking i can't believe i was there like that i did that and and I just think that's, that's, you know, that's dream come true stuff. And I could have so easily not have done it, not because I wasn't passionate, but because I think it's just not gonna happen. So I think you've really got to ask for things and, and just, yeah, voice the things that you want to do because you might just talk to somebody that might help you to enable that. Yeah. But actually keeping it to yourself. The power of connecting. Yeah, keeping it to yourself doesn't always, help you get there unless you're really 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 driven but otherwise just talk to people about stuff tell them what your big bold goals are because say it out loud out. yeah don't be scared yeah so whilst we were touching on you on social media mm. i would imagine your social media has gone off the hook we were talking about yeah. instagram and twitter yeah and the pros and the cons and the good bits and the bad bits what advice would you give anyone out there that finds it difficult to put themselves on social media? Because we were just talking about this, weren't we, about how the different contestants kind of use their Instagram and social yeah, media. Yeah. I absolutely love your social media. I love your Instagram. It shows bits and pieces. In fact, it's all the things that I talk about in my Instagram training, your Instagram account has. So it has the personal side. It has the bits with the kids. It shows what's going on behind the scenes in your life. Yeah. So how how did you feel about being so much in the public eye on social media well, I, during the show? During the show, so I, I mean, we, we're lucky that we do have um, 
a really nice support with from the production company. So they are you know, really supportive with um, social media stuff. But it it sounds really simple, but it is just about being you, just being more of you. Yeah. Um, and if you want people to get to know you and understand what you're about, you've just got to be able to share things with them. I had to think about whether how much I share about my children, for example. Do you know like what? That. You we have can to make talk. A okay, so we're allowed to talk about this because it's in mobile. But the funny story where the, the, your your little one poo pooed on the bed. Yeah. And you have to be mindful of the things that you're sharing to social oh, yeah. media now because you are so much in the public eye. Yeah. But the fact that you had that support there from Great British Bake Off, I know there's a lot of people that go on different shows that don't have that support. So the fact that you had that support. Yes, yeah, so really... I had my Insta so my Instagram account, for example, but was closed. So I only had friends on there initially, people that know me very well. And I would, you know, if it's somebody I would stop and say hello to in a supermarket. Yeah, you're in, I'd accept. Okay. But if we're not even going to talk to each other when we see each other physically, I'd think, well, Do you there's need no to point. Be on my so I had, yeah, exactly. You don't need to see the inside of my living room if yeah. we're not even going to talk to each other, you know. So I had lots of stuff, really personal stuff that was on my social media, um, you know, all the mayhem that comes with having two young children, all that kind of stuff. So when I made the choice to then make my profile public, I did go through and I took some of those things out. And I actually, you know, some of it, it's not necessarily, I mean, none of it was actually very controversial um, at all, but it was just stuff that is quite personal, you know. Um, and I just thought, oh, I don't know if I, I really want to share that with loads and loads of people that don't really know me You're very, very well. much, I think, your open access. I think especially once you've been on something, a show like Great British Bake Off, we were talking about this, where where people think, they know you and they, yeah. you, they think that they have a right to comment. Yeah. So some of, we were just laughing about the fact when people were criticizing your bakes and things like that. Oh, yeah. And it's like, for real, have you tasted yeah. your cookies? <laughs> Do you just... know how good they yeah. are? But people have that, they feel that they have that right to comment because it's social media. So yes. I totally get And they see us as characters, changes, yeah. I think, a little bit. So with Bake Off, you've got 13 bakers. And then people are like, oh, I know, oh, that's, she's that one, and he's that one, and he's the funny one, and he's the cool one, and, and I, you know, we're just people, we're just people, yeah. we have lots of different attributes, and um, so we would, especially while the show was on air, there's always lots of Twitter commentary, for example, most of it, and I mean the bulk of it, 95% of it is, is actually really good stuff, but there's always going to be um, some negative comments, but, uh, you know, if I was on a debate show and people were commenting about things that I'd said or done or whatever, that's fine. But I'm on a baking show, so if they're going to tell me they don't like my cake and that I should be going home, I'm like, you need to eat that you cake. Need to eat if you've cake. got one of those TVs... I'm going to eat the cakes. I'm going to eat the <laughs> yeah. cakes and I'm going to let you all know how good they are. I'm going to eat all the cakes. But I, I'm actually fine with somebody telling me they don't like my cake. If they've eaten if the they cake, eat the cake yeah, though, that's don't, fine. I can't see you don't I like the cake. I always want the feedback. So actually, I'm terrible because when I bake something and I give it to a friend, they're like, yeah, it's nice. I'm like, no, okay, what about this? Can you taste what about this? That? What about that? Did you like that bit? Can you tell that's in there? Did you know I put some maple syrup in there? Like, oh no, I was like, oh, I need more maple syrup. So I want the critical feedback because I'm obsessed with like Improving. developing a recipe yeah. and then and getting right and nailing it and I will keep going, keep going, keep going until I get it there, get there. But um, yeah, you go, I think social media is an amazing vehicle and I have really enjoyed the support that I've had. I really like the engagement I get from people. I really like the, you know, a couple of days ago, I shared a recipe of something that I cooked with my mom, a, a curry that we eat at home all the time. And I love that somebody in California will say, oh, I've never seen these vegetables before. I'm going to try and make it with something else. I'm like, yeah, good. Do it and show yeah. me. And I think it's amazing for all that sort of stuff. And you just have to accept that the negative stuff is just part of yeah. it. And you have to... I mean, some people say, don't look at it, don't read it. I, I do. It's hard, though. It's really, really hard. Well, I, I just have to look at it, so I will. I'll delve in. But I think, for me, what I need to do is be resilient to it and, and just put it back into context yeah. and not be upset by it. But hiding from it, for me, doesn't work because I'm going to come across it anyway. So I'd rather read it and be like, okay, fine, whatever. And then just put it back in its box and just remember that there's this much commentary and this much of it is negative. This and stuff is great. Yeah. Look at that stuff. Yeah, and right. Yeah, and you can read the other stuff, fine, but don't act on it. Like, don't, don't change anything you're doing because three people said they don't like something and 500 are told they do. Yeah. So look at it, fine, but don't do anything differently because you're not doing anything wrong. Yeah. So. Totally, 
totally agree. So the next question um, we've just talked about. So Jojo, if you are listening to this, if you are watching, um, you've asked how long does filming for an episode really take? Well, we've just figured out it takes a long time. It takes, it takes like a long three time. days, doesn't it? Yeah, well, so we film um, the signature, which is the first challenge, and the technical challenge on one day. And the showstoppers are usually the big bake. So they will take like our bread, Bread week, the, the show stop was over five hours, for example. Wow. So those will be on the Sunday. So we're filming for two days. Three days nearly. Yeah. So I hope that answered your question. Um, Naomi wants to know, how funny is Noel in real life because he's her secret crush? Oh, he's so lovely. Can like, tell them about so the story. Nice. So we were asking, I was going through the questions earlier, and like we, because I know what you girls are like, we didn't want anything rude in here, okay? So <laughs> I had to pre-check the questions. And we were going through, and you told me a funny little story about oh, Noel. Oh, yeah, so Kylie had asked, Where is Kylie? what's oh, the most yes, ridiculous go, thing yeah. that um, Noel has said to Priya? So, I mean, he, he's very funny. He's really kind, really sweet. And Noel and Sandy would both come into the tent and say hi to everybody in the morning, give us a hug. Because we are quite nervous. Yeah. Nobody wants to go home. You just you want to make a competition. Well. At the yeah. end of the day, it's, it's still a competition. Yeah. So there is that pressure. So they would always come in. Um, but Noel's just, he's just very kind. He's always really complimentary, he'll say really sweet things about the things that you're making. Uh, but then he'll also say something really random straight after and you, you just can't tell whether he's being sarcastic <laughs> or not. But um, I think the most random thing that he did, he came over to my bench, I'm like frantically doing something. I had my little handbag in the drawer. I opened the drawer, the camera there, he takes my handbag out, finds my lipstick, and I'm like still trying to do whatever I'm doing, put my lipstick on, <laughs> and then put it in his pocket. I'm like, where are you going with my lipstick? It could so, be worse. He could have pulled other things out of your handbag instead of There's not very exciting things in my lap. I mean, he'd probably find a piece of Duplo in there or something, but there's not very exciting things in my handbag. But, um, yeah, but he is very funny. But just really nice. Really, really nice. Like, genuinely cares. And we'll, we'll try and make sure that you're all right, especially when you're stressed. And Sandy's the same. They're really, really nice. That sounds so nice. So lovely. Sounds like a good place to be. Oh, yeah. So, Sharon asks... What made you apply for Great British Bake Off? I, I loved watching the show and I started baking a lot when I would have days at work when I was really stressed and I'd come home and I want to make something. And so I'd thought about applying then, I guess because I'd gone a bit mad with baking and I was doing it so often. And we'd also just moved house and I wasn't living in a shared rented house anymore. I was living with my husband in our own kitchen so I could make a big mess, take over, do whatever I want. So it was that was in 2012, and that's when I downloaded it, didn't apply. And then it stayed in the back of my mind all those years, and every time I'd watch the show, I'd sit and think, ooh, if that was me, I'd make this, I'd do that. I'd practice and it. And now least, it is you. I'd practice it at least eight times before I go into the tent, and obviously <laughs> that's not feasible at all. But um, I'd always had it in mind, and I, I just, I love baking, and I would always be making different things. So I'm not necessarily a cake maker. I do make cake, but I actually just really enjoy bread and I really like pastry and I like developing new skills. So whenever I was doing that and then sharing it with friends and family, they would say, when are you going to apply for Bake Off? You should really apply for Bake Off. And so, yeah, I thought about it. I thought, yeah, I should do it. Why not? Why not give it a go? And, and so I did. And second time... And here you are. I was there. Yeah. I've lost, I've lost the stream of questions, but... I have to finish with a question from my little boy. Oh, yeah. Because he was very excited this morning. I don't know who was more excited, me or Jed. Um, so he was like, Mummy, can I ask a question? And I said, well, you're not going to be there to ask the question, but I will ask you. So Jed would like to know, mm -hmm. what is your favourite cake, Priya? Do you know, my favourite cakes are actually really simple cakes, not heavily iced, because I... I just think, I just want to eat all of it. I don't want to be taking off big bits of fondant as cute yes. as it is and not eating it. I think if it's there, I want to eat the whole lot. So my favourite is um, lemon drizzle. I That's love my favorite lemon too. drizzle. I think it's so nice with a cup of tea and it's just the perfect like afternoon Yum. bit of cake. I love it. So I do make lemon drizzle a lot, but my husband doesn't like lemon drizzle. I do. Um, you know, <laughs> Bothered. So if I make it, then uh, I'm making it just for me. And I made a lemon drizzle loaf for my birthday for myself, and it's simple. <coughs> it's just a humble loaf. But I love it. Good so, choice. Yeah, that's my favourite. Okay, I could sit here chatting with you all day. We've been sat here I for hours. I could talk all day. Like, we've I been sat here since ten o'clock this morning. For anybody that's watching this live, it's now twenty past one. We've had lots to talk about. So let's finish with, and I say finish, I mean finish for now. 
we're gonna have Priya back. She's got loads of stuff going on and we are gonna be back to update you with everything. But final question is gonna be, what would be your top tip or bit of advice for anybody that is in that place where they don't quite know where they want to go next? I would um, say, try lots of different things. Um, little things, like just dip your toe in little things just to see whether you'd, you'd enjoy it. Because I, I, I was in that place and I, I really wanted somebody to just say, you know what, you should really do this. And actually somebody might have eventually, but that wasn't happening. And you so can't I, wait around for that. No, so I had to try little things. And actually before, before I started writing and before I applied for the mentoring scheme, there was a one day workshop. It was just actually a talk on writing a book. And so I went to it and it was just one day, it was just one evening, it was just a talk. And I thought, I'll go along to that just to see whether, do I think this is the sort of thing I could do? Could I do this? And, and that's what I mean by just dipping your toe in something. Yeah. I hadn't committed myself to anything. I wasn't applying for anything. I was just giving it a go. And actually with the baking, if I wasn't always already baking frantically at home, which I was, so I, I already knew I loved it. But if I wasn't, I would just give it a go or go to, I don't know, a baking course or something. Just, just find just try your passion. Stuff. Yeah, I think you just don't always know what it is. And so you've just got to give little things a go. And you don't have to do it all at once. You can just say, you know, one, this week, I'm just going to go and do, go to one class for something or go and read something or sign up to something or whatever. And, I, and you don't have to go to a class or sign up to things, but I think sometimes when you commit yourself to something, you'll do it. Because it's really hard to find time to do something that you enjoy if it's not work and if it's not, um, when you're already juggling loads of things, you feel like you can't, but you've just got to Find try something and make that time. And and I am often carving out time for myself quite late in the day because that's the only option I have. But then if that's the only option I have, then so be it. So I think just try different things. And when you do that, you'll learn more about yourself. Like I, I've learned that I'm a very creative individual, but actually if you'd have asked me a few years ago, I'd have forgotten that about myself. I probably wouldn't have said that. It would have been somewhere on my list, but I'd have said, oh, I'm this, I'm that, and whatever. But I've been able to kind of hone in on that now, and everything I'm doing is quite creative. So yeah, I think, it, but it took me a while to get there. I'd lost myself a little bit with nappies and work, traveling all around all over the place and that sort of stuff. Which we all do, Yeah, I think. What a great way to finish our interview. So Priya, tell everyone, um, where can they find you? What's your Instagram handle? It's actually, it's not exciting at all. It's actually just my name, Priya, <laughs> o Priya O'Shea. I mean, my name is interesting in itself because that's always, yeah, having an Irish surname as a brown girl. As a brown girl. I love it when you keep yeah. saying that as the brown girl. Yeah. So if you would like to go and find out more about Priya and everything that is going on in her life, you can go and check out her Instagram at Priya Roche. Check out the Instagram stories we will be sharing today. There will be loads of sneak peeks of what's been going on behind the scenes. But until the next time when we will be bringing Priya back, thank you to Priya Thanks. for being here. And thank you for you guys for listening or watching wherever you have been listening and watching from. And I will be back very soon with another episode of our Instagram success stories.